this chapter in Hebrews keeps propping up, propping up uh, all the time. And guess where we start Hebrews chapter 6? Well, the chapter headings are often uh, not that strategic. You have to start back in Hebrews chapter 5 to get, a, get a, an inkling of what is going to go on in Hebrews chapter 6. So let's start with 5, 11 to 14. They read, Concerning him, Jesus Christ, verses 1 to 10, we have much to say, and it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not food. Who do you think we have in view here, the audience, reading this? Unbelievers? Come on. So anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, unbelievers don't live on the milk of the word, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. Teaching about righteousness, that phrase, which is more advanced doctrine, solid food, for the more mature believer. Next verse, 14. But solid food is for the mature, who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. The Hebrew Christians, to whom this letter is addressed, have not progressed much beyond what they learned at the point of their conversion. Concerning him, Jesus Christ, as we read, we have much to say, and it is hard to explain since you have become dull of hearing. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness, but solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. So the phrase rendered, we have much to say, in which Hebrews 5.11 NAS implies that the apostles have more advanced teaching i.e. more advanced Bible doctrine to teach the Hebrew believers. The author continues, notice the we's, the, the Hebrew uh, author, the author of Hebrews, uh, puts himself along with those who are the apostles in the sense of having the same task. Perhaps he is an apostle. The author continues to admonish the Jewish Christians to grow spiritually so that they will become acquainted with the teaching about righteousness and be able to distinguish good from evil. A lot of times you become a believer and all you're focused on is your trip to heaven, eternal life. Don't learn much more than that. And if you stop there, don't have good teaching thereafter available, which I didn't when I first became born again. I couldn't find a church and Billy Graham Association turned out not to be Christian. So, I languished a little bit. It took a long while before I started learning something of value beyond salvation. So, note the principle here that immature and carnal believers are not generally acquainted with the teaching from the Bible about righteousness and are not generally able to distinguish between good and evil. You're still enmeshed, and I still am myself, enmeshed in this temporal life. The only way I can get enmeshed in eternal life and spiritual things beyond this temporal life is to read the Bible. Let the Holy Spirit lead you, but you have to help him by putting your nose in the Bible. He'll direct you. A lot of times somebody will bring something up. I tell people all the time, where do you start reading the Bible? Not Genesis. The letters that are addressed directly to you. Eventually, as you branch out, you'll get to Genesis and all the other books of the Bible. But it takes some time, but at least get something reinforced in the teaching about righteousness. And boy, Paul's letters especially are good at that. They are still babes in Christ needing milk. They are not unbelievers. Unbelievers don't need milk. They need salvation. These, those believers to whom Hebrews is addressed have not matured through constant study of and obedience to God's word. Nothing like studying it. But then when you get directed on obeying it, you get to learn it all the more and learn the difficulty of that in this world. Compare 1 Corinthians 3, 1-3. Brothers, 
I could not address you as spiritual, but as worldly, mere infants in Christ. Sounds familiar. I gave you milk, not solid food, for you are not ready for it. Not yet. Indeed, you are still not ready. You are still worldly. For since there is jealousy and quarreling among you, you are not worldly. Are you not worldly? Are you not acting like mere men? Hebrews 6.1 Therefore, having left the beginning principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, completion, maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, useless works, and of faith in God. That's how you first became saved. As Christians become, these are Hebrew Christians, and you moved away from the useless dead works, like those doing the, the works of the Mosaic Law in order to get saved. There are guidelines showing you how far the line you are, showing you how much you need grace, salvation through faith alone, in Christ alone. And there are also uh, a rule of life for those people in Jewish communities. And the Gentiles have their own uh, rules of life as well. And it's not that they need that, although well, sometimes the principles are very similar. Hebrews 6, 1, therefore, refers to the previous section in chapter 5, infant believers. <clears throat> therefore, having left the beginning principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, completion, maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead, useless works, and of faith in God. Therefore, refers back to what was previously stated about Anyone who lives on milk being still an infant, Hebrews 5.13. Immature infant believers are in view, who are not acquainted with Bible doctrine, especially on righteousness, and are not able to distinguish good from evil. The infant Hebrew Bible believers are admonished to move on past the elementary principles of the doctrine of Christ. King James Version 6.1. Therefore, having left the beginning principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection. That word means, uh, teleos means completion or maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works, useless, dead, useless. You, you have dead, inactive, like a car battery, useless toward an end, and a faith in God. Take a look at the inner linear here. Having left the beginning of the Christ discourse, or more fluidly, having left the beginning principles of the doctrine of Christ. Point C. Another affirmation that believers are in view, only believers are admonished to move on in spiritual maturity. People would do a careful examination of the opening of this from the end of chapter 5 into six, Hebrews 6, 1 and on. I don't know how they can say you can lose your salvation. I mean, how can they say these are unbelievers? Therefore, having left the beginning principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on into perfection, completion, maturity, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead, meaning useless works and of faith in God. The author says in Hebrews 6.1, let us move beyond the basic teachings of Christ and start growing as Christians learning and abiding in the more advanced doctrines of the Bible, these are believers in Christ and view. Otherwise, there is no moving on past the basics. An unbeliever would not be able to go past the gospel of Christ, the gospel of salvation. Only a believer can be thought of as able to advance toward spiritual maturity. Unbelievers go nowhere until saved. Corroborating this, one 2.14. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, and he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. Moving on in six one still. We're belaboring these verses one at a time because there's so much controversy. The infant Hebrew Christians are admonished to leave the principal doctrines of Christ and move on to maturity. So therefore, having left the beginning principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on to perfection, Completion, maturity, perfection, teleoteta, completeness, spiritual maturity. Uh, 
sometimes I don't like these translations. This one here could say maturity much better than perfection. Because the Christian life isn't one of perfection at all. For example, New American Standard Bible, and they asked me, Therefore, leaving the elementary teaching about the Christ, let us press on to maturity, not laying against the foundation of repentance and dead works and a faith toward God. Maturity. See, Young's literal has perfection. King's A version has perfection. Better to stick with the meaning that best suits. The dictionary here on this. Perfection, perfectness. Wholeness, completeness, New Testament usage, perfectedness, completion denotes the highest stage of Christian teaching. And that's not perfection. We don't ever reach perfection until the next life. So, better to keep the context going. I like the NASB. And let's take a look at New King James Version. Go on to perfection. Now, we move toward perfection, but maturity is what's in this life in view, and that's this life, not the next life. God will make us perfect in a resurrection body. In any case, Infant Hebrew Christians are admonished not to lay again a foundation of repentance from dead, useless works, i.e. repentance from performing sacrifices in order to be saved. Don't forget, Hebrew Christians, they came from the Jewish background. Not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead, useless works. Repentance, by the way, is a change of the mind. The word repentance is translated from the Greek word metanoeos, which means meta, change, no ass or noose the mind. Here it is. Fine dictionary. Meta noeo. Perceive afterwards or meta after, implying change and noeo to perceive comes from the Greek noun noose the mind. So the seat of moral reflection. In contrast, for neo to perceive beforehand signifies to change one's mind or purpose. Repentance. So repentance is applied here to not having once again to change one's mind from doing dead, useless works for salvation which don't accomplish that end because they are dead. Mosaic law is dead to, to uh, trying to get perfection in our own lives because we are imperfect. To once again understanding that they already expressed faith in God, faith in Christ that gave them that salvation. Repentance is applied here in Hebrews to not having once again to change one's mind from doing dead, useless works for salvation, which didn't accomplish that end because they were dead. Useless to that end. They're useless to other ends. To understanding that they already expressed faith in God, having trusted alone in Christ alone, in the once for all time sacrifice of Christ, and have already received salvation. Faith in God, as the letter of Hebrews moves on, Specifically, Christ alone. The dead works, once again, is not, to not having again to have to repent from, considering the context being Hebrew Christians, are those works under the Mosaic law system, more specifically performing religious rituals and sacrifices to gain merit with God, and thus compensate for sins in their lives to the end of receiving eternal life. This is a misuse of these rituals, which were not intended to affect salvation at all, but to picture Christ's once for all time sacrifice that they were supposed to have believed in for salvation. Pharisees taught otherwise. They said you have to keep the law for salvation. 